Hey everyone, Drew VZAP right here. Today is December 13th. It is 10 in the morning. It's below 50 degrees. We're out here at the bee yard getting ready to do my winter oxalic acid treatment. You know, I was looking for a good day to do this. Uh, my schedule's been kind of booked the past few weeks. I know it's been a, about a month since I've even uploaded a video of the status of everything. So today is going to be the day where we're going to go in here and we're going to um, treat all four of these hives with oxalic acid. Uh, main reason you want to do that this time of the year as a Varroa mite treatment is even though I've been treating throughout the summer and the early fall and was able to kill a lot of mites um, through other means, not through oxalic, uh, but now is kind of that time when you want to be starting to think about the reality that you probably didn't get them all, you know. It, no matter what mite treatment you use, there's always going to be some that make it for the most part, or there's, if they don't make it, you know, if you do actually get a, a complete kill count inside the hive, there still is the chance that bees are going to bring in Varroa from elsewhere. So the reason why oxalic is so popular in the winter is it's a great, easy way to um, treat for Varroa, especially now that there's so little brood present because oxalic acid is only going to kill the mites that are on the bees themselves, or as they say, the phoretic mites. So any mites that are underneath the cappings, when the queen lays the eggs and the bees cap over the eggs, and you know, you've got that nice brood pattern, there's always a chance that there's a Varroa hidden under there, and this oxalic acid will not get those mites. So, you know, this is a time of year where the queens slow down, and they don't really lay as much. Sometimes they'll still have a little bit in there, but sometimes they won't have any at all. And this is, today is not gonna be me going into these hives at all. And any beekeeper will tell you it's usually not a good idea to be going in your hives unless you have a very good reason to do so. And I do not have a good reason to do so because I'm not worried about anything aside from getting them treated right now. The bees are gonna be a lot angrier if I go in there. Again, I mentioned before it's below 50 degrees out here. I think right now it's 47, 48 degrees. Bees are not going to like it if I'm going in there and, you know, making them colder than they need to do or breaking the propolis seal. That's another thing you don't want to do. The bees spend so much time working hard sealing up their hive. So all I'm really going to be doing today is showing you how to do an oxalic acid treatment in particular, because I haven't really found any videos online of it with these Apame bottom boards, which I got over the summer. This is going to be my first year doing them uh, or using them with the oxalic wand that I have. I do not have a fogger to do the treatment with. I have just like the $50, $60, you know, pretty cheap oxalic wand I'm going to be using. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And I'm going to see how this works. I have a thing in place that I think should work. And I'll show you that in a bit. And I'll go over my equipment list. But we're going to try that. If you guys have any questions at the end of the video, you know, leave them in the comments below. Like I said, this will be my first time doing it. So, um, yeah, we'll just take it from there. All right, so I'm going to run down the list of what we're going to be using today. So I will be bringing my smoker just to get the bees away from the entrance. Uh, we've got our tools because we're going to be handling oxalic acid. Once it sublimates from a solid into a gas, you're going to need some... Um, personal protective equipment. I will be using this little 3M or breather looking thing to protect myself. I highly recommend you do the same. I know some beekeepers won't and they'll be like, well, I'm standing, you know, not downwind from it or, you know, I'm not catching, I'm not catching the full, you know, brunt of that vapor coming at you. But just in case, you know, the, the winds change and you don't want to just catch a whiff of that when you shouldn't be. So I know everyone has their way of doing it, but I'm just going to be extra careful. Use the rebreather. You don't want that stuff getting in your lungs, damaging you, hurting your body when it doesn't need to. Also going to be using these eye protective goggles. Same reason, you catch a, a bad whiff of it in your eyes. You know, you don't want any sort of burning or scarring or anything that could result from that. So I'll be wearing both today. Uh, I've got this little, my little tiny Jackery 240. I'll be using that to power these clips in case I need to recharge my tiny little battery. This is just a, a crummy little Amazon. It's a little 12 volt, just, you know, whatever. I'll be able to to uh, power my oxalic wand over here. See, this is just a cheap $50 or 
one it's got both of the you know positive and negative leads so i can put those on the battery and get it lit uh, i've obviously over there got my oxalic acid itself same thing got it off of amazon so i'll be using that for the treatment my measuring utensil in this case we'll mainly be using either the quarter or the half teaspoon depending on how big of a hive we're going to be treating canola oil the reason for this is i'll be spraying my apame bottoms um, I'll, I'll show you in a minute like basically the part that you can put either diatomaceous earth or oil in i'll be spraying in that that at the bottom there so we can actually get a proper count but that's pretty much it for the equipment the only thing i wanted to go one more time over is with this wand the thing with these apme bottom boards that you'll see here in a second and i i brought an empty one out just so i can show you the example is by using this wand you know you're, you're heating this thing up to the point that it's going to turn a solid into the gas so it's going to get super hot and if that thing was just laying on a plastic apame bottom it's going to melt the plastic those things are just plastic you know normally a beekeeper has a wooden bottom board or maybe it's like a screened metal bottom board so you know metal on metal not a big deal metal on wood it might leave a little bit of like a burn mark on there but no big deal it's not going to like actually set your hive on fire but the metal on plastic it is going to melt and basically make the apame bottom bar uh, board pretty much useless or not useless damage to the point where you're going to run into issues in the long run with bees going where they don't need to be so what i did today was i just modified this thing by attaching two paint sticks to it and i did two instead of i think one you'd probably be fine but if you can kind of look at the the clearance between the two i just wanted to give it a little bit more height so that way it wasn't touching or getting too close to the to the plastic and starting to melt it and i'm hoping and we're, we're going to do a test run on on this one before we actually go into the to the real deal ones uh, i'm hoping this will prevent it from getting the bottom melting and you can kind of see where from previous times i've used it where you know probably laying on wood starts to get you know darkened and scarred and so yeah just two paint sticks zip ties we'll give it a shot but the idea when we go over here, we'll, we'll set this up as though we were going to do this before we go. The idea here, everyone, is with these anime bottoms, you know, you've got this, you've got this entrance, right? Sorry for the shaky camera. This thing just broke a little bit ago. And so having to work with what I got. Obviously, you're going to have to remove this, right? Okay. So that's gonna come out. This is all empty underneath here, and I'll show you that up close. So now you've got a exposed, fully open entrance, which is what we want. And the idea is gonna be, you know, this is gonna, we'll go over the actual timer situation as to how long it's gonna be in there and everything. But the idea is basically gonna be, this is just gonna get pushed in there once it's heated. All right, and you can kind of see it was under here this is how it would look so if that thing was just touching right on top you'd just be melting your plastic the whole way through so i wanted to give it enough of a height gap right there so that way it does not and just to use as an example if these were like you know frames that were on top of it it's not like the frames are even touching the wand either it might be hard to see and yeah, unfortunately i won't be able to really show you guys what i'm talking about but it's not like that's even touching there's still probably about Oh, I don't know, a fifth of an inch. You know, like there, there, there's enough space down there that between the actual wand, the actual heated element, to the bottom of the wooden frame. So I'm not even worried about those two touching. But that's gonna be the idea. So the other thing to make sure is obviously if you're doing this, you're not collecting pollen. It should be self-explanatory, but this should not be in there. You gotta make sure you have your stopper in the back, right? So that way. When the gas is going in there, you want it to be closed off. And then just like any other treatment with oxalic acid with a vaporizer or otherwise, you're gonna need to block off the entrance. So whether that's a t-shirt or a rag or whatever you do, that's gonna be the idea. Um, also, I know I'm using a super box. I just didn't have a spare uh, hive body deep to use as an example. So we're just using a super as an example for today. But this is how it's gonna go. So we're gonna, run this through as a practice and you're just going to kind of see what you know pretty much before we actually start the actual treatment over on the real hives this is kind of how it's going to go and so this will be kind of like our dry run and 
that'll give us a good idea of if this is going to work or not with Nap Bay bottom board. All right, so we're going to do this as a dry run. Apologize if you can't hear my voice that well because I've already got my my mask on me right now. Let's see if I can remove that a little bit. That might be a little bit better. But basically, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put the positive lead on this battery. And we are in the period of time we're going to call the burning stage. This should be about two and a half minutes that it's going to take for the element down there. Right here. There's already about a half a teaspoon of oxalic acid in there. And so the timer has been set. We're going to watch it and see if it actually gets to two minutes, 30 seconds or not, before we actually see some action, which we should. It's not going to take too long. So let's just wait for that for a minute. Because usually during this stage, as it's starting to sublimate, we're starting to put it in there, starting to get things sealed up, and this is gonna be a good way to know how this is gonna work. Because after this burning stage is when we're gonna unconnect the lead right there in the power off stage, which is gonna last a whole nother two minutes, still gonna be sealed, and after that two minutes, we'll pull the wand out. So, let's see how this goes real quick, and then I'll bring the video back up for the next part. All right, so as you can see there, it was sublimating just fine at this point. Timer's gonna go off any second. I'm gonna pull that red lead off. And now we're gonna set a new timer while it's still sealed for two minutes. Again, apologize for it being very hard to hear with this respirator on. My voice will not project that well. So, new timer, two minutes. And then we'll go from there. everyone so that's it for that that's the two minutes that are done so like I said that was the power off stage where it was just basically sitting in there all right no power running into the battery it's just you know basically letting pretty much whatever remaining oxalic was in the element the metal burn off essentially so at this point you would start a new timer this one would be for 10 minutes and we'll this one will basically be the sealed in stage. So, you know, normally what we'd be doing is something like this, you know, just kind of like set a timer, just watch it. I, I can kind of see gas still coming out the sides of it right now. You kind of see what I'm wearing right here, right? So I got my goggles, I got my mask. So even though I'm, I'm nowhere close to the vapor, you know, the gas coming out just in case, still wearing it all, right? better to be safe than sorry so but once this 10 seconds are done I can basically remove the um uh, or I'm sorry technically I apologize for that this needs to come out now the start of this 10 minute stage so you can see some didn't quite finish burning up but you still want this to be sealed up during these 10 minutes apologize for that and so like I said, the timer's been running for just under 10 minutes now, I'm sitting at a little above nine. And then after those 10 minutes, you're pretty much done. And uh, yeah, so the, the other thing I kind of wanted to go over is on the back side, I mentioned the, these trays. I'm gonna be basically filling this tray with canola oil, some sort of oil, right? And that way I can do a, an accurate mite count after a few days. So just want to mention that. But I'll let you know when the sealed in stage is done and then we'll check the damage or not damage on the inside of that bottom board. All right, the 10 minute sealed in stage is over. So at this point, we're just gonna 
open this up. Take a peek inside and see what the damage, if any, is. So, this is where the element would have been. I don't see any melting on any of the plastic. As far as bottom of the frames, I'm not seeing anything. Except for that, but that's just a little bit of the oxalic. Just looks like kind of building up on there, almost like a dust. I probably should have let my one keep lit a little bit longer it looks like there was still a little bit residual in there that didn't quite melt so lesson learned on the next one might do a little bit longer of a burning stage an extra 30 seconds but overall folks that went really well or at least as well as i thought it was going to go so i think the trick really is going to be adding paint sticks if you're like me if you don't have a fog or if you have a cheap little one and you happen to have fma bottom boards give it a shot see if it works for you uh i'm going to pause the video we're going to actually get started for real now over at the hives. So I said we've got four to go. Let's go over here and take a look. Those are just open feeding jars that they're not even touching right now. Those have made bottoms getting cleaned out. Now, let's take a look here real fast. So the bees are enjoying the sun. I'm actually pretty impressed that so many of them are out flying right now. They're very busy. It is still only about, it's below 50, and these are out flying. So, pretty surprised with that myself. But, for those of you that are new beekeepers, just keep in mind, I kind of mentioned this earlier in the video, bees are not happy to see you like they normally are any other time of the year. So, just make sure you're wearing your stuff because this is a prime opportunity to get stung. You know, the, the, the bees know that they've got to really defend the hive because there's there's no going back if they lose their hive this time of the year. It's like gets knocked over or, you know, from a survival standpoint, they know they have to make it to spring. If they ever swarmed, you know, past, at least here in the south, you know, middle of October, their chances of survival are very slim building up anywhere in time. And, they know that as well now in the middle of winter that they're pretty much done for. So they're a little bit more aggressive, more likely to sting you. Just wear your stuff, just like I was wearing the protective stuff for the oxalic acid treatment. So let's we'll start getting into some of these hives. We're pretty much just work from left to right. We'll do oxalic on the left one, you know, follow all those steps. I'll, I'll go over one and then you'll just kind of see me working through each one as we go along. And I'll probably keep my mouth shut most of the time. As I, like I said, I'll just I'll, I'll go over the same steps we just went through for the first hive right there, the green one. Same thing we did, and do all four. And then we'll check again, hopefully in a few days, see what our mite drop is. All right. thing I'm gonna do real quick open up these entrances for all four we're actually gonna start at the red hive first it's just I'm already over here so red is gonna be the one that's gonna be the example 
to show you all. The other is just going to be speed run through. We'll leave that up here. Don't forget it. Okay. We'll get everything ready again. So, get my little power pack ready. All right. Black lead, negative side. Hold on to the red lead until I get it ready. Get my oxalic. I'm gonna move it up for you so y'all can see. So we've got a deep body, right? All right, and I also have above that a super, and then it's like a false super on top of that. That false super is obviously, you know, just for me feeding sugar water. So in this situation, what I'm pretty much gonna be doing is normally you do about a quarter of a teaspoon to half a teaspoon for a high body deep, like this one right here, All right? So quarter to half. Uh, the super, what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of round it up and we're just gonna go with a half teaspoon for this. Uh, to treat the whole red hive. In fact, we're going to basically treat either a half to just a little over a half of a teaspoon of oxalic for all four because they kind of range in that size. Now, you will see that, you know, what you'll read online is, you know, you do, should not be treating your hives with oxalic acid if you have honey bee, uh, if you have honey supers in place. I am not using the honey that's in those supers. The honey that's in there is just for the bees. I'm not trying to consume it, even though I know there's legislation trying to make it so that way. Um, you won't have to worry about that anymore if you're a hobby beekeeper or a commercial beekeeper, etc. I know we're not there yet, but the honey that's in there now is not gonna be used. And even if it was, by the time that I'd actually even harvest it, it would be months down the road. You know, oxalic acid that's in there, it's probably gonna dissipate over time or again, be eat up by the bees going into the spring so that way they're prepared so if you were doing this any other time of the year like the summer or too close to harvest i would say do not do what i'm going to be doing i would say remove your honey super and you know, just take it all off and just treat the high body you'll lose some of the bees obviously there's bees up in the super that you want to be treating for but unless you honey band it and push them all down into the deep you're going to be missing some so today we're just going to be keeping it simple i said do a little over half of a teaspoon and go from there so same steps get my measuring spoon half a teaspoon the bees are definitely checking me out they're like what are you up to today since there was some residually already in there i'm not gonna add any more Close this up. Get my clock ready. Yes. This is gonna get hot quick and I do not want there to be any issue. I'm just gonna set this wand right here for a second. Get my shirt ready. Once that goes in there, we're gonna close it off, right? So right now we're in the two minute mark, two and a half minute mark. Clock is set. Everything's sealed up in the back. So I'm not worried about that. I already got the red plugs in place. We know it works. So I'm gonna get it in there right now in the place. in there deep as you can go go about there and then get my shirt in place okay and we wait so I won't be doing this for every hive it's just so that some of y'all can see the real deal with obviously bees going all over the place Make 
sure there's no chance for and get out that way. In case those of you are keeping track of time at home, 109. This is the burning stage. See all the bees hanging out up front, wanting to get back in, confused as to why they can't, but they will soon enough. It's, it's pretty impressive to see middle of December in Georgia, so many bees out and about when temperature's barely 50, if even. And I think it's just that sun's really helping wake them up and getting them moving, but I'm not used to seeing such active bees in the cold weather. This will also be a great way for us to see a follow-up treatment, because as you all know, I, I treated a couple months ago, and um, to kind of see, you know, just what the difference pretty much two months makes, because that's kind of when we were out here the last time treating, uh, that was basically early mid-October. So it'll be curious to see how many, oh, there's a timer, it'll be curious to see how many more mites, if any, we get that drop off these hives. And if you all remember from the earlier video, the red hive had a very, very high mite load that was definitely saved. And so seeing any more drop will be very interesting to me. So obviously at this point, I'm unplugging the red. Most of that should have burnt off. We're in the power off stage, which is two minutes. Still sealed. New timer set, two minutes. I've got my respirator on again, just to let y'all know that I added an extra minute to that burn stage and all that extra got in there. So I just got to remember, you know, your your time frame might vary, also might vary upon how good of the equipment you have. Like I said, this is not the most expensive piece of equipment. This thing's only about, like I said, 50, 75 bucks. There's much better models out there, but I used to use the two, two and a half minute burn and then the two minute power off, but this one might need a little bit more time to get heated up. So for the, the next three hives when I go over, I'll probably be doing about three and a half minutes for the burn stage, just to give it a little bit more time. And this There was actually a lot of content in there. There was a lot of oxalic that needed to be burned off. So that might be a factor as well. But just want to let y'all know that, like I said, your time may vary, but that is a good rule of thumb is the two and a half, two and then 10 minutes where we're at right now, because we're just in the sealed in phase kind of letting everything happen in there, let the gas move around. Uh, one issue that I already can foresee with these Afame bottoms, even though come up with a way of doing it is unlike, you know, some other hives, it's somewhat ventilated on the bottom. So I noticed as I was watching the, uh, the process happen that there definitely was some, you know, some of the gas that was coming out of the bottom you know, that, that's going to happen no matter what, but I just, I wonder about how much is actually getting sealed in there in one of these FMAs. Uh, just, just food for thought, something to think about. Might not be that big of a deal, but just something I wanted to share from my noticing of it using these for the first time with Oxalic. So, all right, like I said, the, the next few, you'll, I'll, there might be quick snips of the, the videos that we'll go through, but for the most part, I'm not going to be boring you all with every step. It's just follow, follow those methods. If you have an IPMA bottom board, try the paint stick method so that way you don't burn your, your plastic bottom. And uh, let me know how it works out for you.
All right, everyone, that's pretty much it for today. Just finished doing all the oxalics for all four. Had to take a little bit of a break in the middle there to recharge my tiny little battery, which all the more reason to use a bigger battery if you got one. But I just wanted to, before I wrap things up, just check this real quick. These are those round top feeders that we talked about in my last video that we got them set up for winter with the modified inner covers. On this hive, looks like they've not really done anything as far as sealing up. They probably like that ventilation. Otherwise, they would have been a, you know, they would have used propolis to make it a little smaller and reduced it. But I checked the other three, and one of them had tried reducing it down a little bit. I think it was the yellow hive. But if you kind of take a peek in here, not much going on. There's just one bee on there. You can see a bunch of them down the hole right now. So they're not really interested just yet in all this dry sugar up top, which is expected. So, put this lid back on. Blue and yellow hive, they were actually all up in their little round top feeder. So, not to say that they were necessarily getting much out of it, but they were definitely in there working around in it. So, again, I don't have many other things to say. I mean, I'm happy I got this done. You know, most beekeepers who do an oxalic treatment in December try to find a good day to do it and I just was lucky enough to be able to do so today before we get too late in the season. I'm sure everyone's having this wacky warm back and forth weather. I think later in the week it's going to get warm here. Um, like I said today's a normally cooler day but we're getting highs still in the low 60s. So you see these bees are just like they're going crazy. I mean look how many of them are out and about today. You would have thought it was a early fall or late summer day out here. There's so many moving around. They're still taking some uh, sugar feed, which I only put it out there just out of curiosity sake just to see uh, You know if it was uh, if they were willing to take it, which I didn't think they would be but I Was um, I was definitely impressed to see that so, you know, this is the thing with these warmer and warmer winters that we keep uh, Getting here now that it's just uh, it's hard to predict exactly what the bee season is gonna you know gonna befall us so I think that's pretty much it. I think um, if you guys have any questions, like I said, I hope the Apame bottom board was, you know, that, that whole explanation of using the uh, the wand, if that's something you have with the paint sticks, if that helps. Hopefully it does for you. I'll probably come back out here maybe in a few days and check the bottom trays that I greased with some canola or olive oil just to see if there is a mite drop, which, you know, assuming there will be some. And that'll be pretty much it. So. Hope you guys have a good, you know, rest of your week. Honestly, I probably won't have another video anytime soon because there's not much else for me to do out here. Uh, maybe I'll do one with if there is a mite drop. It's worth doing. But otherwise, you guys have a good rest of December even. Have a, have a great Christmas with you and your family and your loved ones. And I'll be talking to you all soon. Thank you so much.